Mike, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Welcome to the show. Say hi to Jay. What's up, Mike? Hey, Jay. How are you? Not bad. Not bad. It's Friday. And hopefully uh, tomorrow's a good day for SU fans, but LSU coming to town with a juggernaut and a Heisman Trophy candidate. Do the Orange have any chance using a third-string quarterback tomorrow? What's up? Well, I mean, I never like to say a team doesn't have a chance, but the chances are small, to be very honest with you. LSU is as good as it gets in college football this year. Their running game is ranked fourth in the country, but they've got the number one running back in college football, the favorite for the Heisman Trophy. Uh, They are just absolutely loaded. Their offensive line is big and nasty and athletic. Their defensive front seven, while it's not deep, so Syracuse, if they're able to push tempo and move the ball, has a chance to wear them down and get them winded a little bit, especially into the second half. If they're able to hang around, they're still they're, the guys that are going to be starting and playing are you know NFL caliber players all over the defense. They've got really good skill position wide receivers, some guys with some speed. Their quarterback is is a uh, good running quarterback. He's not a great throwing quarterback. Uh, he's someone that's going to throw the ball probably five yards or less past the line of scrimmage. He's not going to go down the field as far as you know trying to stretch the defense at all. LSU isn't going to ask him to make a lot of difficult throws. But on, on the passes that he does make, he's fairly accurate and efficient. He hasn't turned it over yet this year. In fact, LSU hasn't turned it over at all. But uh, Syracuse definitely is going to have their hands full on Saturday. Well, now, Mike, there have been other top ten juggernauts that have come into the Carrier Dome in past years. The Orange have knocked off teams like Nebraska and Miami. But this probably not the same Syracuse football program as the one that knocked off some of those top programs years ago, correct? Well, absolutely. So those teams years ago had – really good players on it the one that you might be able to compare it to is the one that beat nebraska syracuse was not a nationally relevant program at the time coach mack was still in the process of turning things around which we know he eventually did and you know they were only a couple of years away from uh, from really getting things going but they had some talented players on that team they just hadn't really started to get things going yet but you know the the syracuse teams that beat miami when donovan mcnab was there um, but the ones that, that even beat, uh, you know, Louisville a couple of years ago when Marone was here, they had really good players on those teams. And, uh, you know, not to say Syracuse doesn't, but when you don't have your top quarterback or even your top two quarterbacks, it's, it's, it's a tough situation against a defense with as much NFL talent as it has. So it's going to be very difficult for Syracuse. And if they are able to pick it up, to, to pick up a surprising upset, I would venture that, uh, it's, probably a bigger upset than anything else that they have accomplished in program history simply because of the scenario and playing a walk-on quarterback. Yes. Now, what happens if he gets injured, by the way? Well, if he gets injured, I think you'll see Austin Wilson go in and, and Wilson will be the, the guy primarily. I don't think they want to play A.J. Long as he's still coming back from that hand injury and is not throwing the ball consistently well enough as he recovers from that. But, uh, you know, they'll use him if they have to. But I think Austin Wilson would get a majority of the snaps. The problem, uh, say the problem with Wilson as far as how he fits into what Syracuse wants to do, he's not mobile. And Tim Lester's offense wants a mobile quarterback that can run some of those triple option looks. We saw Eric Dungy executing so well against Central Michigan early in that game and even back in week two against Wake Forest. That's why Mahoney, I believe, is getting the call, is because he does have that mobility. He can give Syracuse that weapon. Austin Wilson does not, although Wilson is is a more gifted passer. So I think you would see Wilson come in, but it wouldn't be completely stunning if uh, A.J. Long mixed in there a little bit as well. Talking to Mike McAllister from CuseNation.com on the Talk of the Town at 100.7 FM WUTQ. Mike, any weaknesses that uh, Syracuse can try to take advantage of uh, here with LSU? Yes, it's that, like I mentioned earlier, it's the the lack of depth along that front seven. Uh, That's where Syracuse has to try to wear them down a little bit, be physical at the line of scrimmage. The other thing, LSU is going to come out and play nickel almost regardless of the formation that Syracuse sets up in. That's what they do. They, They like to play their nickel defense and force the offense to adjust to them, to get one more defensive back on the field, to uh, mitigate some of the lack of depth they have at linebacker. And uh, one of their starters is actually out for the first half of this game, starting linebackers due to a, a targeting issue from their game against Auburn. So those are some areas. If Syracuse can get the running game going and really start to wear them down, force them to get out of the nickel formation that they like to play in 
and make them test some of that depth at linebacker and, and on the defensive line and start to wear them down, that can allow Syracuse to, to hang in there a little bit. And then I think if, if they're able to, and this is, trust me, a very tall task, somehow contain Leonard Fournette, force LSU into third and six, third and seven, third and eight situations, make quarterback Brandon Harris throw the ball down the field to try to beat you, that plays into Syracuse's hands because, like I said, he's not the most accurate uh, passer when he's throwing the ball down the field, the intermediate and deep routes, you know, the, the deep outs, the um, deep slants, the posts, things like that. Even though Syracuse's secondary has given up a lot of yards, this is a matchup where they might have a chance to, to maybe get a couple turnovers if they can force them to throw the ball. And Syracuse loves to put the pl- pressure on with the, with the blitz, I know. So. Yes, absolutely, and that's, that's another reason why you want to try to force LSU into passing situations because it allows you to bring your pressure packages more frequently. We know Chuck Bull is going to want to do that. He loves to bring his linebackers off the edge, and even Zaire Franklin up the middle, maybe bring a corner here and there, drop a safety down into the box and blitz him into one of the gaps. Syracuse loves to bring pressure. It's something that helps them create all of the turnovers that they've been creating this season and something they're going to want to do against LSU. Even if LSU runs the ball, they might have some run blitzes in there. But if they can get him in the third, six, seven, and eight, then they can bring a lot of that pressure and try to force Brandon Harris into some quick decisions, maybe get a couple hits on him, maybe a strip sack, and you can get the ball deep into their territory and give your offense a short field. All of those things Syracuse needs to do if they're going to pull off this upset. All right. Now, Mike, I love head coach Scott Schaefer. It's said that he's on the hot seat this year. Very likely he'll be 3-1 and one following this game this weekend. What's his magic number to save his job, and do you think he'll get there? I think if they get to six wins, I don't see how you could get rid of him. So I would say that's his magic number, quote-unquote. If they get to five, but they're competitive in some of these games like the LSUs and the Florida States and the Clemsons, and they're showing some signs, especially with the injury issues that they've had, I think you retain him as well. Um, depending on how they look, if they only win one more game the rest of the year, maybe you talk about it then. But I really do think they're going to get to a bowl game. I think the team is good enough. I think they're as deep as they've been since Doug Marone was here, maybe his last year with with the Ryan Nassib-led team. Uh, I like the way that they're recruiting. Um, I think they're adding better talent, talent that other Division I Power 5 programs want. So I really think that Scott Schaefer, if people are patient with him, will get this thing turned around. I'm with you. I, I like him as well. I think he's a um, – obviously he's, he's a good guy, but I think he's a good football coach. You know, you just got to kind of give it time to, to let him completely turn over the roster and get his guys in there. All right. We're with football expert Mike McAllister from CuseNation.com on the talk of the town. Among the teams that folks in the Mohawk Valley follow the most, Colgate has Holy Cross. Utica College has Cortland and Hamilton trying to get rid of a 20-game losing streak. They open up against Tufts this weekend. Who do you like among the local teams for this weekend? Well, uh, the the Utica-Cortland State game is one that I find kind of intriguing. It's two high-powered offenses, uh, two of the best offenses in the Empire 8 Conference. The big key for me is whether or not um, Utica can um, control Steven Ferreira uh, their their big quarterback there, who's a dual threat, he's going to do uh, hurt Utica with his arm and his legs. But I think Utica's defense is enough to stop them, and they can score with Cortland. So I think Utica pulls off the upset in, in that one. The Colgate game, I think, is going to be a, a tough one against Holy Cross. Holy Cross uh, quarterback Peter Puyals is is a, a really dynamic player, efficient passer, doesn't turn the ball over, is also their leading rusher. It's going to be tough for Colgate to stop him, so I think Holy Cross gets the win there. And then uh, I'm going to I'm going to predict that Hamilton uh, ends their long losing streak there and pulls off the win to uh, get their fan base excited. All right, and finally, last night the Giants beat the Redskins in Thursday night football. Eli Manning played well again for the Giants, but Ryan Nassib, the former Syracuse quarterback, is waiting in the wings. Will we see him later this year, or does he have to wait another year to get in? Only if Eli gets hurt. And uh, I, I don't think right now you're you're at a situation where Giants fans want to see him. I don't think you will. Maybe in a mop up duty situation if they play a game later on and they're up, you know, thirty five to three into the fourth quarter. But even given the way that the Giants have collapsed in their first two games, you still might not see him in that situation. I don't 